Jays won in walk-off fashion, taking game three of this four-game set against the Red Sox. Today, the A's go for the sweep behind the arm of Tommy Malone, who has been sensational as of late. But the Green and Gold have a tough task as they will have to get past the Red Sox ace, John Lester. Final game of the series, final game of the homestand, A's, Red Sox, next. Sunday afternoon for baseball. He's going for the sweep. The giveaway today is the Coco Gnome. And we like it. And Coco likes it. The Coco Gnome. That's your giveaway today. And the A's are trying to finish up a terrific homestand. Your pitching matchup, John Lester and Tommy Malone. So a couple of left-handers today. It's game four of the series. It's the Oakland A's hosting the Boston Red Sox. And it's all coming up right here on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Copper. You saw the two pitchers, Malone and Lester. This will be a rematch from May 3rd, Ray. And in that game, Tommy Malone really struggled. That's the bad news. The good news is he hasn't struggled since then. And that's the best news because in that game, in the first inning, it was not a good inning. Johnny Gomes hit a grand slam after a couple of walks on a base hit, a grand slam over the green monster. And that got him on the board early, but uh, would not end there. A couple more home runs, one by Big Poppy and one by David Ross. But the best thing about Tommy Malone, that was in Boston. Things were not working for him, but the things that he has done since then have just been outstanding because he's kept the ball in the park. He's pitching so well, especially here at the Coliseum. He can forget about that loss because if that's his last one and he can pitch as well as he has been, then he'll take it. Yeah, it was eight starts ago. Yeah. Now, John Lester in that game, well, he was the exact opposite. He was terrific. Yeah. 15 strikeouts. Started in the first inning with a cut fastball. That kind of set the tone for the entire ball game. Going eight innings and striking out 15. Right on the outside corner of the right hand as he throws a cutter. He'll also throw it down and in. Mix a fastball. He's really not that overpowering, but the fact that he can use his cutter so effectively to lefties or to righties. It works out very well for him, but a great start for him in that game. And actually, the ace game closed. It was 6-3 to three the final. He did leave with the eight shutout innings. So that was back in early May. Different story right now as the A's are playing great baseball, and they are going for the four-game sweep this afternoon of the struggling Boston Red Sox. We'll have lineups at first pitch from the Coliseum when we come back. A's and the Red Sox.
Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or Barbecue Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants and by Toyota. Number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Well, it's Sunday, and that means the Little Leaguers take the field with the Athletics. This was just moments ago. That youngster's going to win the Hustle Award. We think. Right. Almost time for the first pitch. The big fella A's are right behind them, so we're just about set for baseball. Game time weather for today is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. 67 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky, so a nice Sunday afternoon for baseball, and the A's wrapping up. What has been a very good homestand so far. These are seven and two on the homestand with one more game to play and then back on the road for the Athletics. Let's look at the lineup for the Boston Red Sox, and here it is Brock Holt. He's in right field. Bogart's back at third base. Pedroia at second. Ortiz is the cleanup hitter. Napoli at first. Gomes in left. Herrera will play shortstop today. Steven Drew gets the day off. David Ross will catch, and Jackie Bradley is the center fielder. Tommy Malone on the mound for the Athletics, trying to continue his streak of five consecutive wins, last eight starts, and of course he's also looking for his first one against the Red Sox. Those other two starts, or at least the losses, coming when he pitched in Boston, so maybe the change of venues will help him today, keep his winning streak alive, and pick up his first one against the Red Sox. Eight starts without a loss since losing to the Red Sox back on May 3 for Tommy Malone. So he's pitching great. Brock Holt steps in and we're set for baseball. And Malone kicks and his first pitch is in there for a strike. First pitch. A 107, 107 first pitch at the Coliseum. Holt hitting 329 with a homer and 15 RBIs. Had a good series, four for 12 with a walk. Well, he's definitely played himself in the lineup, and when Vic Victorino comes back, going to see what happens. But uh, his aggressiveness, his hitting, his playing outfield, and that was a true great play yesterday. Headlong dive, especially oh, yeah. on the Kaispo sack fly. Here's your umpires, Greg Gibson, calling balls and strikes this afternoon. Strike called to even the count at two and two. Bogards to follow and then Pedroia for the Red Sox. There's a line drive to right field and a base hit. So Brock Holt opens up the game with a base hit, and here's the defense for the Athletics. Cespedes, Gentry, and Boat in the outfield. Kiaspo, Lowry, Punto, and Blanks on the infield with Norris doing the catching. Josh Donaldson is going to be the designated hitter today. Coco Crisp, a little bit under the weather, but he doesn't need to be in the starting lineup to help the A's win a game, that's for sure. We found that out this weekend. Tommy Malone trying to throw the fastball in to Holt, and maybe that's a good sign to get just a single. Last start, Odor. 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 Hit a home run on a fastball inside that uh, Tommy did not get it all the way in. Sometimes it works well if you find out maybe a pitch is not working early in the game. Might change differently, but it's a fastball that Tommy wants to throw inside of both lefties and righties to at least establish the inside part of the plate. And maybe go outside with something off speed. There's a strike to Xander Bogarts. A little trouble in the first inning this year for Tommy Malone. I bet that 6.23 is a result of what happened May 3rd when he gave up four, the grand slam. And that was a couple of walks and a base hit. Did get a strikeout and then the slam. Good pitch there on the inside corner. One and two. Here's the fastball inside and Derek Norris. He does a good job on the inside part of the plate. He 
does not necessarily go down with the target. It's about thigh high, belt high, sometimes even higher. That one's hit to left field. Cespedes now goes back near the wall, and he's got it. <laughs> Cespedes was setting up to possibly throw out a base runner. I think Holt maybe thought it uh, was going to go in the third but position. Second once baseman, he got halfway, tried to get back, thought about attacking. Cespedes, though, was all set. Backed up, warning track right in front of the wall, but did not hit it well enough to get out. And Cespedes had set up without even looking at Holt to see what he was doing, made a strong throw in the second again. Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So one away for Pedroia. Pedroia has had a good series, four for 12 with a homer and a double. Just made the mad dash home on the wild pitch that tied the game yesterday. It was in the eighth inning. Well, that was their way of scoring a run to tie the game. And A's did win it extra innings, but unfortunately, Jesse Chavez, who pitched so well, seven innings of shutout baseball, got a no decision. Offense could give him just the one run. De La Rosa and Chavez matched up yesterday, and Sonny Gray is going to get some extra time as the rotation's kind of been set up for the next road trip. Big swing by Pedroia fouls it back. I think if we can look at the uh, the next road trip will be in National League cities. So the way it's set up, all five starting pitchers yep. will get a yep. chance to hit. One game. Yep, one game. Get to pitch and hit. Starting with Casimir and Mills in New York. There they are all together. Just uh, could be talking hitting. Yeah, Drew Palmer and saying, "What are you guys talking about?" I can't pitch right now, but I'll be back. Ace will also have a series in Atlanta in August, a three game series, and then the two games in San Francisco. So those will be the other opportunities for the pitchers to hit. It's going to be a flounder one. Just listen to that yeah, conversation. Be just to hear what they're talking about. Sonny Gray holding court. He's right in the middle. Three and one now to Pedroia with Ortiz in the on deck circle. Always have to think about this part of the batting order, and then, of course, behind Ortiz is Napoli and Gomes, a couple of power hitting right handers. And that's through the left side and a base hit. So Pedroia has his fifth hit in the series, and here comes David Ortiz. Got at 85, and Jesse Pedroia hit it on the ground, but unfortunately to the left of Caspo. It's double play ground ball, except Caspo couldn't get to it. Got the leg, foot up, and just hit too hard in the five and a half hole. So here's Ortiz hitting 249 with 16 home runs and 44 runs batted in. Lowry, the shortstop, is playing right near second base. Now he gives a little ground. And pitch to Ortiz is in for a strike. That's a Brad Mills type curveball that he used to strike out the side. A couple of nights ago in his first start. Ortiz three for nine in this series. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 2. Well, David Ortiz got Tommy Malone at Fenway Park in the game we referenced on May 3rd, a fastball. And just look at Tommy's face, he tears it all over the bullpen in right field. That was a fastball. It was yesterday on 3 0 for Bergerson, got a slider that he swung at, looped it into center field. It amazes me seeing where Kaiaspo is 
and I don't care if it's David Ortiz who's up. Why they don't run? It's amazing. I mean, it's so hard for a third baseman. This would be a double yep. steal. But there's just so much area that Kaispo has to cover even to get to the back. But we've seen this often, and others just don't seem to, to try to steal for it. I and I know you've said too, it's a very difficult throw yeah. for the catcher to make. You have a tendency to throw to the, the fielder instead of the bag, and that's usually behind him. And that's why they have to reach back. But I would hope that the sign has been given that if the double steal occurs, that they'd throw to second. But even with Pedroia not being even close to him, he could get a huge jump. Breaking ball is low in the dirt. But I think I don't know in this case if they would pitch carefully or walk David Ortiz if there was a double steal open up first base but I think it's just very inviting for teams and of course hope to be the type of player to run for Roy we know can run. Two pitches outside, and now the count is even. It was 0-2. Now it's two and two. Well, the good part for Tommy Malone against Ortiz is keeping the fastball down. He's the belt high fastball hit for a home run in Boston. There's a question of whether after the big loop of the curveball, if Tommy Malone goes back to it, and Ortiz is going to be sitting on it. Two-two pitch. Swing and a miss. So Ortiz strikes out, and that's the second out. To the hard slider, which was a great pitch. Instead of the slower curveball, through the hard slider right there, he geared his geared fastball, didn't get, get it, got the slider it already committed, and that's the purpose, the reason you throw it hard. Especially when the hitter may be thinking fastball, it looks like it, but then it disappears. And for Big Poppy to strike out, that's a huge strikeout. Great note. I'm afraid to go after the big boys. And here he faces the fifth place hitter, Mike Napoli. Napoli takes a bit inside. Two for 11 in this series is Napoli. He's got a walk, he has scored a run. This time it's Punto who's trying to keep Holt, the base runner, at second close. Another close pitch, and it's a bit low. 2 0. Mike Napoli in this series has said, seen several change ups. And just have to wonder how much he is thinking about the change up. And it's low again, 3 and 0. Oh. The on deck hitter is Johnny Gomes. And with his knowledge of the game, he remembers exactly the pitch he sure. got from Tommy Malone in a similar situation. It's a first pitch fastball, and it was obviously with the bases loaded. Real pitch, and Napoli takes on the outside corner for the time. It's not the true fastball, which is good because he probably had the green light. So he'll be really ready to go on a 3 1 pitch, Napoli. And close, could have been outside, and it's a walk. Well, so exactly. Goals with the bases loaded. It was two walks and a single on May 3rd. This is. Two singles and a walk. Batting in the sixth position. Gomes did not waste any time. Number five. The Green Monster. Johnny Gomes. Fourth spot in the first inning. And for John Lester, who, as it turned out, pitched eight shutout innings, that was a great start for him. Might have been the last time they scored six runs. <laughs> At least in one game. The Red Sox have scored just 16 runs in their last eight games. 
But an opportunity here as Gomes waits and the first pitch. He is a strike. Five career grand slams for Johnny Gomes. Tried to get the same spot a little bit outside and low. It's your runners Holt, Pedroia, and Napoli. And a fastball, and it's one and two. So that's a fastball. You know what he's sitting on. And he has to be thinking change up. And for him to start, not be able to pull the trigger. That's a great located fastball. And the fact that it was a fastball, and when you put Johnny in between, he was looking for. And that one blocked nicely by Norris. Holt a long ways down the line. It's amazing. And after he had blocked the ball, Kyas actually went to third and Holt strangely came down as far as he did. But what a great block by Derek Norris to keep Holt and see where Holt is, and he just stands there almost trying to invite a throw. So two and two the count. Missed outside. We got a full count with the bases loaded here in the very first inning. Well, they might as well pull the string, right, throw it right down the middle. And if he's looking for it, tip your hat because he's not throwing a lot of changeups in this inning. It's every time to do it. This would be it. And here it is, and it's lined to center, and it's going to fall for a hit. Two runs are going to score. It almost looked like a knuckleball hit out there by Johnny Gomes. So he gets a big hit here in the first inning. He's pumped up, and it's a two nothing Red Sox lead. Well, he stayed hard, and that's uh, that's just quick reaction. And unfortunately, Tommy does not throw mid 90s. So when he throws it at 86, especially thigh high, it's hit like it was. And you're right, the knuckleball effect. No chance for Gentry to get to the ball, but all the runners on the move. Two are going to score easily, and. First one going to third, also easy. But Gomes gets RBIs 26 and 27. Right, John Lester just too good to get him too many runs. Yep. David, my name. My name's David. So a 30 pitch inning so far for Malone. Jonathan Herrera. I'm way better looking than you. Herrera playing shortstop today in place of Drew. He's a switch hitter. Oh, Fastball's inside. So three singles and a walk. That has a couple of runs for the Red Sox. It's almost similar to uh, what Jesse Chavez did yesterday early, where the fastball was just sinking too much out of the strike zone. And for a, a pitcher, you want to try to keep the ball down, but then it sinks too much. And the Red Sox, a very patient team, and took them yesterday. Four walks from Jesse, and taking them today. And another take, but that's a strike, so the count is two and one. It's almost a gift. Yeah. And kind of that fine line, go either way. Malone, the two one pitch. To right field. Volt's got to hustle back. Still going back, and he makes the catch. 
So a couple of runs for the Red Sox, uh, three hits. So bottom of the first coming up, two nothing Boston. First inning, a bases loaded, two out single. Let's look at the lineup now for the Oakland A's. Gentry, Lowry, Sussman is Donaldson, Norris, Blanks, Kiaspo, Boat, and Punto. And John Lester is on the mound, eight and seven record for the left hander, making his 16th start. How about that? Strikeout to walk ratio, four to one, four plus to one. So the cutter we showed earlier is a very, very good pitch for him. And he signed through 2014, which I think means he's a free agent yeah, after yeah. this year. Big story in Boston. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he's a very good pitcher and he's done a lot of great things. No hitter, pitched well, championship seasons. And see how he does this year. Gomes, Bradley, Holt in the outfield. Bogarts, Herrera, Pedroia, Napoli on the infield. David Ross is your catcher today. And Johnny Gomes with a couple of RBIs already. Well, it's not bad. It's half as many as they scored on May the 3rd. So maybe that's a good shot. <laughs> Don't want to see any score, but Lester, he got off to the good start in Boston. He just carved up the athletics, especially when he got the four runs after the first inning. In the bottom of the first after he had pitched the top half. So the big left-hander is ready. And he deals. A strike to Gentry. Gentry, 293 with four RBIs. The curve is outside. Now we've seen that call a strike. And of course, it kind of has a tendency to go around the plate to get to the catcher, but. Greg Gibson's strike zone already seems to be a little bit tight today. Well, what Lester did in Boston that day is, and, and he had a decent strike zone from an umpiring standpoint, but he he took advantage of Absolutely. it big time. Yeah, the, the, the cutter, especially yeah. to the right hands. And he just kept going to the same spot and making great pitches. And it was all said and done. He had 15 strikeouts and eight innings. Pitches bounced foul between Bogarts and Mike Diago. DJ Rayburn in first inning. Coco 0 and 2 cutter outside and rung him up. Struck out four of the first batters, the first five batters he faced. Three two to Gentry and he swings and misses and that's the first strikeout for Lester. Time now for the Nissan keys of the game. 
Johnny Lester be good. That's J O N N Y as in Gomes. Be good. And Dave, uh, you sweep a team in a four game series. Threes are tough, but a four game series, you get a sweep, you can pat yourself on the back because that's quite an accomplishment. He's trying to do that today with a sweep on the Red Sox. Nice play by Pedroia. Throws to first, and Lowry can't believe it. Pedroia. Handled that nicely, and that was a tough play. So two outs. The last time the A's swept the Red Sox in a four-game series at home, it was 1932. And the A's went to Philadelphia. And Connie Mack was their manager because <laughs> he was their manager for like 50 years. Right? Uh, yes, I think he has some records that won't be ever be broken. And I mean, if you can wear a suit and a top hat to manage, then that says a lot because you own the club. You can stay there as long yeah. as you want. And he did. That was the Philadelphia A's championships 10, 11, 13, 29. But you know, the look on Jed Lowry's face after he hit the ball, it's like that look of, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Another one? Another hard hit ball and it's right at somebody who makes a great play. Suspidus hits one very high to center field. Bradley waits. He's got it side retired. So Lester has a nine pitch, three up, three down. First inning. Two nothing Red Sox as we head to the second. Here's to the green and gold. The Athletics. Yesterday, Justin Chavez was very good again. Seven innings, just three hits, right at 100 pitches. He did walk four, but certainly could have got a win. Ended up with a no decision, but he was terrific. Questionable call in the eighth inning. The catcher, number three, David. Oh, the Red Sox get their tying run, and then the A's won it. In between innings, the home plate umpire Greg Gibson and A's manager Bob Melvin talked pretty much the whole time. Right out in front of the A's dugout. It was not hostile. And they could have been talking about that play yesterday. Drill to center. Going back is Gentry and Ross has homered. And he's got good power and he shows it again. So it's 3 0 Red Sox. Well, this must be the Donnie Murphy of the Red Sox because Murphy, four home runs, three against the A's. Ross, three now, two of them against the Athletics, and the other one also against Malone in Boston. Yeah, First pitch fastball hitting, and Ross was not going to wait around, and that's a great pitch to hit. Middle play, melts high, put everything in it. 
that quickly. That's the yard. So just over the 388 side. Well struck ball by Ross. It's the second home run in this series for the Red Sox. And here's Jackie Bradley. So getting back to what we were talking about, they could have been talking about that. Gibson was at first well, base yesterday. He and oh, he should have been the one making a call. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think Quinn Walcott should have deferred immediately to him. Bradley's got a blue pick. This is what we're talking about here. Because you know the umpire did not react until after Mike Napoli pointed. Clearly was caught by Stephen Moore whether it's a foul tip or not. And then they found pitch in front of the plate. The drummer kept hustling, hustling in and scored the time run. Bob Melvin got ejected. But I still don't think it's a play that, you know, the umpire might say foul ball, but then he has to get help from a corner umpire, which happened to be Gibson at first base, because you can't look over the catcher and see whether he caught it. it just to me it's guessing. Some say it should be an umpire review because if they couldn't see it, they're reviewing everything else. Why not that? And you know what, too? Now with the you know, the review system, and that's not a play that can be reviewed, but a manager's going to go out there and argue now, and he's going to know whether he's got a beat for next. Yeah. Because you know, Chip Hale probably got on the phone. What, what, what happened? What, what did Adam see? And. So Bob probably knows when he goes out there and he, who knows he may say to the guy they're telling me yeah. that you missed the call. Exactly. I mean who knows. Well unfortunately we're seeing too with the play that's called on the field is the one that stands. But that was overwhelmingly obvious that it was a pitch that was caught. That was then the A's won, and uh, now they tried to trying to win a game when they're already down three to nothing in the second inning. No one and one the count to Rock Colt who let off the game with a hit. So five hits off Malone already, and we're only in the second inning. By Bradley at first, and he goes. And the pitch is bounced second base, backhanded by Pinto, and they get the out at first. But Holt was running, or Bradley was running, so he's now in second base. Yeah, Bradley took a couple of throws at first, but once Tommy Malone left the leg went on first guards. move, and the pitch did go to the plate. And it's a case where it's fortunate that the hitter did swing because Bradley had a good enough jump, he was going to steal second easy. First move, and he's off. And he was actually straight sealed all the way, head down, so it was not necessarily a hit and run. It just happened that Holt maybe didn't see him going with the green light that he swung. Time to see a, a runner with the head down. It's a straight steal instead of looking back. He should have looked back when he heard contact in it. Well, you've said it many times, it's a lot easier for a right handed hitter to see the guy go because he's. I guess you could say he's facing the runner almost. Right? Yeah. Left-handed hitter, it's happening behind him. You have to look over your shoulder peripherally. You have to be able to see him. That's not always the case, especially with the guys with green lights. Two and zero now to Bogarts with the runner in scoring position. Bogarts uh, fly ball to fairly deep left field. Jackie Bradley, the runner at second, almost looks like he's thinking about taking off. Punto trying to hold him on, but at some point Punto has to get back to his spot. Bradley is getting a pretty good lead. Well, from Punto, as he gets back to position, he has to try to look around Jerry Davis. Cannot be easy. That's true. 
Can ask the umpire to slide over a little bit. You ask him. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> Two to Bogarts with Pedroia to hit next. And that one's hit high to left field. Cespedes is back again. And again, he's going to make the catch. So Bogarts with a couple of long fly balls to Cespedes and left so far in this game. So two outs. Now, fortunately, two pitches that Bogarts has gotten under. Number 15. Him in the park. Well, we've often said it. It's a starting pitcher now becomes a long reliever and just trying to keep club close enough. And that's what the A starters have done. Maybe it's a case where they've gotten down a little bit behind in the score, but they have not allowed a team to really expand, increase the score. Tom Long's trying to do the same, although it's been a very tough two innings so far. So now he faces Pedroia, who singled and scored in the first. That was extremely tough out in these spots with the runner in scoring position. And Pedroia, his numbers 268, four homers, 27 RBIs, maybe not. Quite as high as he would like, and I think you could say that about almost all the guys with the Red Sox. We look at Napoli's numbers, a little bit down from last year. David Ortiz hitting under 250. One and one with Bradley at second. Good one on the outside corner. The Red Sox offense, second fewest runs scored. Time for the second fewest home runs. And they just have not been able to get it going. Magical season put them at the top of run score last year. Slice to right field. Vote coming in. Vote's going to get there. Side retired. David Ross with a home run. His third of the year. So the Red Sox lead three to nothing. Chavez is on sale June 13th. 
a few days ago. Learn about the A's unique platoon system. Find out what drives Staffy, Sunny Gray, and get to know Jesse Chavez's special family bond. The new issue will be available at team stores or online at athletics.com slash magazine. That means it's available right now. So John Lester is another run to work with. It's now three to nothing, second inning. Donaldson, Norris, and Blanks for the A's. This one's lofted high. Foul. And it's going to be the third baseman, Bogarts, who hung in there all the way down by the bullpen mound. And it such a high pop up, he was able to get back there and he made the catch. Well, he has the wraparound sunglasses, approached the mound, but did not. Worry about the incline as he felt the grass below his feet and then caught the ball. Nice play. You have to concentrate, watch the ball the whole way, and he does it nicely. Right there, I don't think he sees it, but put the hands up momentarily, and then maybe he still doesn't see it, and then picked it up. And it's kind of a semi. I don't see it, but if you're going to emphatically, maybe the shortstop, but uh, Herrera was there, didn't need to be. First pitch to Norris he is a strike. No strike call. Didn't have to be. The numbers 301, eight homers, 34 RBIs for Derek Norris. More action for Bogarts. This one is low on the throw and Napoli tried to pick it and he could not quite do it. Bogart, I think he probably had a little bit more time. It looked like he rushed his throw and he's have a base runner. It's like he was turning a double play at third base unnecessarily because he charged it. Norris does run well, but catch it and throw it underneath that way. And throw a sinker. He's rewarded with an error. And, wow. That wasn't <laughs> did that not hit the dirt? I don't know that it did. Let's take another look at it. That did not hit the dirt. That that's on. That's a that's an E3. Yeah. And maybe that will be changed after reviewing it. I gave him five. It's a throw, but if Napa turned his first base and went over, he caught it easy. There, nonetheless, but it's just a matter of who gets it. Yeah, that ball was it was not in the dirt. Let's see how he's going to catch the ball or attempt to catch it and just imagine turning this glove over but he's trying to backhand it and it hit right at the, the tip of the webbing. I think he's definitely probably thinking he should have caught it and he should. Lang takes inside. So the count one one to Kyle Blanks getting a start at first base. 318 with the Athletics, 296 overall with the A's and the Padres. There's a shot to center, and that's a base hit. Morris stops at second, two on one out. Great hitting that cutter down and in almost hit his foot. 1 1 elevated the fastball out of Lester and right back up the middle. Hey, one thing complex has shown is that very quick. He's had a couple of home runs. But that quickness there on the fastball didn't really go out and get it, try to pull it, just took it back up the middle. I think I always have to be concerned about the cut fastball from Lester. Get too aggressive even swing over the field. Great pitch. So the A's had a chance to get on the board. First pitch to Kyle way inside again. Kyle <laughs> starting at third base today. 236 the average with three homers, 23 RBI. Going back, 
still going back, still going back, and it's over his head off the wall. One run scores and blanks to third. Pass for the second, and the A's are on the board. Johnny Gomes didn't see it once he got over his head. But he's going to get over his head anyway, Cap, but I think it just kept going and threw his hands up almost as if he didn't see it. That's a tough son in left field. And Diaspora, another fastball similar to the one that Blanks got. And he hit it high, son, very, very tough. He watched Johnny Gomes go back. Looks like it's going to be over his head, but. And at that point, unless he was deacon, in which that might have been a deep. And it almost worked, but. I think it was kind of more than a dig now that you look at it instead of losing the sun. He knows the sun well enough and didn't have his glasses on. But I'll tell you, the throw going to the plate was the blessing for the A's because if it goes to third, might have gotten blanks who hesitated heading to third. So Kiaspo gets his 24th RBI, and here's Bolt who takes a curveball for a strike. Vote 12 hits in his last 29 at bats. Well, the air kind of opened the door yep. for the ace to get something going. Lester was stretched for the first time. Side corner one and two to vote. Stephen Vogt just needs to put the ball in play and it will score a run for the A's. Question. Went outside again, this time pitched too far out. Fletcher struck out 15 in a game. He it's pretty good idea as a strikeout pitcher as those numbers that we showed indicated 105 strikeouts just 25 walks and he's got to be thinking that right now. The boat hits it hard to the shortstop and they're going to come home and the tag and once is out. And Jonathan Herrera I think he looked up and realized hey. Yeah, I got to play at the plate. Let's take it. And he made a perfect throw. Well, he threw it hard or he hit it hard. And I don't know that blanks broke on contact, which I see him coming down the line. Now, see him hesitate. And maybe because it was hit in such a way they thought it was a line drive and not a ball that immediately hit the ground. But he hesitated and been better suited not even go if that was going to be the late break that he got. Because plenty of time. Actually, Ross under the new guidelines, he was blocking the plate without the ball at his foot. But I guess he gave a lane. That's unfortunate. Just a late break and did not score. So now two outs, and here's Nick Punto. Punto hitting 238 with a homer and 10 RBIs. Boy at second vote at first. Okay, we got something new, Ray. The shallowness of the oh. right fielder and the center wow. fielder. This is a new all time that's most it. shallow. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Would you agree with me? I agree. Is that right there? Oh, I mean, that's goodness. almost like, you know, there are some. Not quite, but some of the shifts, the second baseman plays almost as deep as hold plan right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah, so it's one and two. Come on, Nick, hit a ball over the head of the center fielder or right fielder. Just I mean, make him have to turn the back of the infield. Yeah, as a hitter, you gotta be saying, I got five guys, first, second, short, right, and center. Looks like they're all bunched together. So you notice it if you're standing at Absolutely. home plate. Absolutely. Punto chased it and he struck out. So the A's get one 
We got a couple of hits there to help of an air by the Red Sox. So it's three to one after two. Selling authentic game used and autographed memorabilia behind section 120 at the Coliseum. Now, items include autographed baseballs and jerseys, game used helmets, bats, balls, and bases, lineup cards, and more. All items are authenticated under the MLB authentication program. Portion of the proceeds will benefit the Oakland A's community fund. Red Sox three, the A's one. It's the third inning with Ortiz leading it off. Big swing and miss. David Ortiz. Changes Moss is now in the game at first base. Now Blanks has been bothered by Kef. Yeah. And uh, maybe that affected him there, or the fact when he did try to kick it in gear and gears, try to score and slide. Who knows what might have happened there, but Moss is always ready. Moss will hit in the sixth spot. About where you hit against left is in probably. So, yeah. probably right. Ortiz, Napoli, and Gomes, four, five, and six hitters in the Red Sox lineup. Pop up foul. Uh, Blanks, it's kind of a line drive, and that's probably why Blanks hesitated. But then when he Took off and then looked back and then tried to hurry. And I think at that point, that would be his left calf because his right foot got hit. And it was more of the calf the other night. Hit back. A couple guys shading their eyes, and it's going to be Nick Quinter who hangs in there to make the kick. <laughs> And Moss looking at him, he Futsal said, I told you I was calling for it. Why do you want to stand there and disrupt me? <laughs> and right there is when Futsal's calling him off. <laughs> but maybe, maybe Brandon Moss, because he's, he's a very chatty guy, right? Maybe on a pop up like that, where usually you say, I got it. Maybe Moss. Says it more, you know. I got it. I can't see. Can you see it? Are you okay? I can't. I don't. Yep. No. You. We don't want a dialogue here. Yeah. Just say, don't see it. Take it. Because I could see Brandon Moss too. Yeah, yeah. having a long conversation. Well, the ball's in the air. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we love him. He's entertaining. Yeah. It's interesting you say that. How many times though, when you see a. Uh, Maybe a miscommunication, something happening 
and a player will say, I thought I heard him say, go, 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 and he was saying, no, no, no. Yeah. You know, so they, they've got to change some of the, the way they explain things. It sounds too familiar. Now, wasn't that the the story in the was it the 72 World Series when Joe Morgan he tagged up at third and That's right. <laughs> no, 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 he said, thought he said go. Go. A, a flip job to right field. That was in the World Series, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. The Reds in the A's. Yeah. Joe got tagged out at home. And well, you can imagine third base coach yelling no, 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 and you know, G N go no. I guess I could have my series mixed up. Sold me. Seventy-five. We're in the seventy-five World Series. I'm not sure, but I remember Joe Morgan tagging up and getting thrown out at home on a. Seventy-five would have been the uh, World Series. The, the Reds yeah. and the Red Sox. I think that may have been it. But actually, the other day when Volt actually hit a ball, and I say that because Volt was the runner. He hit, he hit a ball. Remember they had that strange double play, and he rounded first. Ty Waller was saying no, no, no. And that's when he thought he said go, and that's yeah, when he sure. tried to go to second and was doubled off. You have the crowd screaming? Yeah. yeah. Gomes got another hit. Hines went to center field. So Johnny Gomes is two for two. Pride of Petaluma. Well, the A scratch to get one back off Lester, thanks to an error. Now batting. Over to think about giving it back. That's another 87 mile hour fastball. Really have not seen a lot of change ups today from Tommy Malone. I don't know if it's just me or the similarities in the pitches, but it seems like the fastball being hit. Shut down inning. Chance for Tommy Malone. That one's belted down the left field line. It is. Good <laughs> Walcott turned around. Got a good look at it and put his hands up. And when the umpire puts his hands up, it means it's foul. Yeah, that's a. Uh... That's a good one to go foul. Herrera is still in the zero in the column, and that's not one you'd want to see him get a three run home run. So change the thinking after that one. Herrera hit a fly ball to vote to end the first inning. It's a strike, and it's only two. Seven hits for the Red Sox. Double one. The Rangers and the Angels will play tonight. Angels try to sweep that series. They won last night in extra innings. Maintaining their six game lead in the West. A little bit low. Well, just need a little consistency, and I don't think it's being given to either side right now. That shot looked low, but Strain has been called a strike already today. Lowry charges. He's got it. Out at second, throw back to first, not in time. Herrera hustling down the line, keeps the inning going. And Bob Melvin thinking about going out as he is looking, and Tommy Malone doing what he should, staying off the mound. And Bob Melvin going back. You know, just the start of it looked like it's going to be tough to even think about doubling up. 
the runner. Brandon Moss did a good job coming off the bag quickly, but Nick Punto had to throw flat footed, and that's the reason Bob Melvin went back in the dugout. And Moss doing as good a job as he could to go get the ball. And that looked more bang bang. I think if he'd been called out, John Farrell would have come out. But the foot. Ball not quite in the glove as looked like his foot hit hit the bag. And as soon as the ball was hit initially, the speed of Herrera did not think it was even a, a chance that it was going to be a double play. Here's David Ross. Ross with a home run in the second inning. Was a fastball got a chance to extend his arms and about bell time. Ross, big strong guy. Of seasons with the Atlanta Braves for David Ross. And he chased the changer. That's good. That's a good time to throw it in. Hitters are looking fastball, and when they see the arm, the arm speed, they think fastball, it's a change up, and that's the swing that you usually get. That's why it's such a great pitch, especially for lefties to throw it. You just have a natural movement away from the right hand. And that's lying but foul as Ross got out in front and hooked it. Ross has been with the Dodgers, the Pirates, the Padres, the Reds, the Braves, and now his second season in Boston, so he's been around a long time. So two and two, Napoli at third, Herrera at first. And they got Herrera picked off, and now the A's are going to have to execute defensively. Coming home is Napoli, and he is safe at the play. So the Red Sox get their fourth run. And the A's. Hayes did not execute yeah. defensively. Well, it would have been okay, except the throw was not good enough to the plate. And Napoli slid around the throw, picked him off, threw it to, and Napoli did the best thing. Started coming down the line. And by the time, by the time the throw came in, it was up the line. Derek Norris had to reach for it. And by reaching for it, could not make the tag. Well, I just wondered there if you're concerned about going after the ball. See how he caught it? Almost as if he did not want to put his body in front because of the new rules. And I wonder if that might have affected it. Because if he had gone after the ball, then he probably would have been able to catch the ball in tag Napoli, and the ball would have taken him into the runner, which is acceptable under the new guidelines. So now full count. And it goes as a double steal. Yep. That's a really a, a play first and third and get picked off at first. Proof there that it takes the perfect throws and he's could not execute the perfect. Throws. Runner goes but a swing and a miss side retired. So a run on a couple of hits and a kind of a strange double steal but it got the Red Sox a run.
DraftKings baseball in style. Before the game, you'll enjoy a catered meal in a private area overlooking the baseball diamond. After that, you'll head down to your group seating area to enjoy the game. For more information, call 510-638-GOAYS or visit athletics.com slash barbecue. Bottom of the third inning. He's trailing 4-1. to one. Four runs on seven hits for the Red Sox. He's a run on two hits. And they'll have top of their order up with Gentry. Which is a little bit high on But attempt with Gentry pulled the bat back. Lester with a couple of strikeouts, one in each inning. He's got some help by air. Bogart's in the second inning. There's a shot right at Bogart's. He was playing in, and he made the catch. See where Bogarts is playing thinking but and Gentry just that's a, just a dive to the left. We've seen Bogarts dive to the right. That's maybe self-defense. As the ball was hooking, put his glove up that quickly and actually it's pretty smart taking to the side, getting his head out of the way. Get out of there. So frustrating for Gentry. You can understand that. I wonder if Lowry said something to him on the way back to dugout. Say, join the crowd. <laughs> Poor Jed. Well, Derek Norris, you have to really be concerned. His foot is giving some room, and I still say that when he went up the line, we have seen him go in to, and I just wonder if he, he strained something. He's had, well, he's been banged up in his left arm. Just looked like if he had gone after the ball, he might have just collided with Napoli and made the tag and got done. Lowry hits that one hard, and he's got a base hit to show for. Him. Take that. <laughs> now Bogart's again playing a little bit shallow. It's not as if he then Lowry was not going to bunt, so kind of even with the bag and I mean that shot. Look like he reacted late, but it's a hot corner, man. You're standing down there and you're wondering, ball is coming at you, and if you react late, there's a reason. So with Lowry aboard, here's Cespedes, who hit a fly ball to center field in the first inning. Jigs, fastball, a bit outside. Cespedes is four for 11 in this series. He's got a home run. And now he's ahead in the count two and all. This also has a seven game hitting streak. Home. Taken all the way and it catches the inside corner two and one. Lowry at first with the one out hit. It's bounced to short. He could be erased. Out at second. Double play. So Lester gets the big pitch. He gets the double play on Cespedes and the A's. Do not score. Headed to the fourth. Red Sox four. A's one.
photo of the game. Tweet your photo to CSNCA fan photo. Name and hometown needs to be put down. So two chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's all brought to you by AT&T. And it's today's fan photo, Erica Yamamoto from Dublin. Scotty Scow, Nerd Power. We appreciate all the great A's fans sending in their photos. A's trying to sweep the Red Sox, but they trail four to one, top of the fourth inning, and Jackie Bradley's going to lead off. And he swings at the first pitch. Pop up behind second base and Lowry grabs it. One pitch, one out here in the fourth. Yeah, Tommy looks like a little frustrated. Four runs in the first inning, but they settled down. Rock. He's oh. seeing his club offensively come back and make some very good games out of these when they've trailed early. So here's the leadoff man, Brock Holt. Taken all the way, and he takes the strike. Red Sox will go to Seattle for three game series. Play a night game Wednesday. Yeah. And fly to New York for the weekend. Thanks a lot, huh? <laughs> At arrival time in. The New York City area, maybe eight to nine o'clock on uh, Thursday morning. Brutal. Just in time to hit all the traffic going into Manhattan. Nice trip. Seattle and then New York. Seattle is smart. He's, he's on the TV. He said, I can do that. I'll just wait and fly on my own. Let the off day get yeah, a good really. sleep. That's, that's pretty smart. I wonder, you know, if you think about that, right? If you know that that's going to be the situation where you're going to be flying all night and you're going to be getting there and you're going to probably sleep all day, why wouldn't you just stay in Seattle Wednesday night and yeah, fly out on Thursday and fly during the day and get to New York at a decent time? I don't know. Well, that's kind of like what the A's do with. Uh, with their off days traveling back east, which they'll do tomorrow. It's the day shot anyway, so you might as well get a good night's sleep tonight before. Little flare. And Punto hangs in there with a tough sun, and he makes the catch. But he was the only one who's going to catch it, and he had a little tough wind action with the ball near Moss. And this one, a an even tougher one. Because it's his all the way, finding the sun, using his glove, and catch the ball and going to the ground. Boy, that, that is real tough. You have to use your glove right until the ball gets near your glove, and that's why the, the tumbling down. See, he's got the sunglasses. See the sun glaring in his eyes, and actually, as he caught it, closed the glove and said, Thank you. I've got it firmly. It's not going anywhere. Two away, and here's Bogarts. Tommy Malone trying to get his first three up, three down. In. He's got a lot of base runners today. Put dope. Slides to his right, and that'll do it. So a nine pitch inning for Tommy Malone, and we are on to the bottom of the fourth. Red Sox four, and the A's one.
Prime streaming sports service is now available. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit athletics.com for details. Nice day at the ballpark. He's trying to figure out John Lester. He's allowed one run. He's had three hits off in the first three. He's been trail four to one. Donaldson, Norris, and then Moss. Donaldson with a high foul ball down toward the A's bullpen. The Bogarts made a real nice play out. Donaldson, two for 11 in the series. Good hit, good pitch to hit there, and he fouled it straight back. Nice play, sir. So two and two. Lester only pitched number 42. Smooth. Look at <laughs> a little bounce in his step yet. Yeah? Or does it sit that softly? He, he, has, he had a screaming line drive at him a little bit earlier, and I asked him about it. He said, if he had ducks, he said it's coming right at my head. And I said, helmet's good. He said, I would not go out there with that. So helmet is there to protect and you're looking at second base and your backs to the hitter. And that's very dangerous for a third base coach. Well, the dirt, but Donaldson chased it. So Donaldson 0 for 2. And that's strikeout number 3 for Lester. Well, they did not go to the fastball. Cutter went to straight change. And as we have said, now it looks just like a fastball. And number 36, Derek Norris. Donaldson just could not stop. For at that point, realized bad pitch to swing at. So here's Norris. 108 strikeouts now for Lester, so he's in the top 10 in that category. Norris foul territory. Napoli is under it, and Napoli grabs it. And Norris is moving kind of slow, Ray. Yes, he is. That doesn't yes, look good. Yeah. Now batting first baseman, number 37, what Brandon Moss. We never want to do is speculate, yeah. but he does have a little different gait walking back. So with two outs, Moss gets his first at bat. Blanks left the game. And Moss replaced him a couple of innings ago. Blanks has been dealing with a little. Calf soreness. Moss on the season, 259, 17 home runs and 55 RBIs. Probably not the easiest left hander for a left hander. <laughs> Hitter to say, sure, I'll go in and play, not a problem. Get in there. He's done well against lefties, but Lester is in that exceptional category. So one and two now. Hits in the second inning and one hit in the third. So 
So you think Lester's going to make some money this offseason, though? That's what you were saying earlier. Are you predicting I, I, that? Yeah, I'd say as a free agent lefty and his resume, I'd say that, yeah, he's got a chance. You're going so far out on the limb there. He's 30 years old. Yeah. Ranks among lefty starters in all of baseball since 2008. Saying to him, "You're good, John. And where do you go? Take me with you." Yeah, ain't that the truth? <laughs> no, he's he's a, a very good pitcher. Remember, we've talked John Lackey. He's a free agent after this year. He's a club option. So Jake Peavy. Yeah. So it's a season for the Red Sox management to decide what they're going to do with some very very key players. Well, Lester in his career is 108 and 63. And he has also pitched extremely well in the postseason. His postseason ERA is 2.11. He won a couple World Series games last year, so that's just another nice thing to have in your resume. You can pitch in the postseason, and especially at Fenway Park. A lefty at Fenway Park is always. They always said it's difficult. Red Anderson pitched a shot out there. Brandon Moss hobbling around his ball hit off his toe. His right toe the protection of the shin guard just did not cover enough of the foot. Missed it. Bang right on the tip. Right big toe. Three two pitch is lined to right and that's a base hit. So the shift was on as always but it didn't seem to bother Moss as he hit it very hard. So two out single. I gave him a pretty good pitch to hit especially after he fouled the ball off his toe. And you have to think as a pitcher catcher is it really going to be that aggressive after fouling the ball already off his toe. But got a good pitch to hit and surprisingly hit it hard as he says if he hits through the shift it's going to be hit hard. So here's Kaspo who has the RBI for the A's. He doubled over Gomes's head in the second and that scored Norris. Emergency swing, lofted foul. So 0 and 2 to Berto Kiaspo. Hey Ray, look where the right fielder's playing. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's almost comical. Yeah. Because you're you're used to these guys playing in you know, somewhat general areas. And when they get out of those areas, yeah. it's extremely noticeable. Brock Holt is it's 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 as shallow as we've seen. I think the surprising it's not like there's a runner at second. You want to try to cut a ball off to keep from scoring. I mean I mean if the ball's hit over his head and runs go to score. Because he's not going to get to it quickly enough. Brian Butterfield saying, "Hey, Skip, think, our, think Holt's playing a little shallow, too shallow and right." <laughs> Brian Butterfield, one of the great guys of the game, third base coach for the Red Sox. <laughs> Just matter, but it blew it. Lester thought that it was time to head back to the dugout. Greg Gibson called it a ball, so the count three and two. Maybe that hit too much in the play. That's strike. Oh, is a strike hit. <laughs> I do not know. Is he has? Mr. Gibson, he'll say, I was right. That, that DVD I'm going to get after games, I'm sorry, it's wrong. <laughs> I hope backed up a little bit. Not much. Not much. Runner goes and the ball's hit to short. 
Herrera stays down on it and throws out Kiaspo's side. Retired. So a base runner for the A's, nothing else, and we're headed to the fifth. 4 1 Boston. Brought to you by Frost Brute Coors Light. Check it out. Lowest DRAs in the American League since May 9th. Scott Casimir's third. See Archer on there. Also, some interesting names. Dallas Keuchel, who we talked about. He's having a very nice season for the Astros. Phil Hughes is on there. And Tommy Malone. So, Casimir and Malone. Tommy Malone started the season 0 and 3 in his first five decisions, and quite frankly, he was not pitching well. But he had turned it around. It started on the 9th of May with eight shutout innings against the Washington Nationals. Just have to wonder too how much the disruption in the early part of the season with rain out and. He had to go to Arizona to make a start because of everything happening at the beginning of the season. It's not on the regular schedule. Yeah, he was kind of the guy due to the rainouts and other circumstances that we had the off day in Minnesota after their home opener, kind of an off day in the middle of the week. He seemed to be the guy that got moved around a little bit the first couple weeks. So it was the guy that uh, a lot of people with the healthy Griffin and Parker that he was the odd man out was going to start the season in AAA. But he ends up starting here and doing well. Moss grabs it and Pedroia is retired. That's so a Pedroia big, won for that's three. That's a big guy because he's so pesky. Yeah. He just finds a way it seems to get on base to make something happen. But Number 34. Line David drive to right did single the first and the two run first inning. So here's Ortiz. It just reported that Kyle Blanks left with calf strain, so that is what's been bothering him a little bit lately. Oh, he run the bases a little bit. That's well, all it takes. And that quick start doesn't help. You have to come down the line, realize it's a ground ball. Trying to score. Ortiz with a strikeout and a pop out so far today. It's that one hard, but Moss grabs it. And that's out number two. So 
Pedroia and Ortiz retired here in the fifth. Five in a row retired by Tommy Malone. Correction, six in a row. Number 12, Mike. Definitely. David R.C. said no bat boy needed. I'll just carry him yep. the bat with me and then take it back to the dugout. Mm -hmm. He did it. Carried it all the way down the first baseline. Yeah, he's been doing that for a long time. Long time. Slider to Napoli, but a bit low. Since the retiring of guys like Edgar Martinez, of course, Poppy's still around, but the true DH. I think guys have to learn how to buy the time in between at bats. Josh Donaldson's DH today. He's accustomed to playing third base. Hit well the right center. Oh, Napoli goes the other way. And that makes it a five to one game. And I wasn't sure that was going to go out, but it just got up and it just kept going. Well, sadly, whenever. He extends his arms. He has the opposite field power straightaway center, which he did. And it's a changeup and went out and got it. Left it up a little bit, then Tommy. And got everything into it. We might not have thought it, but he thought it. Just that his reaction after the ball was hit. And the outfielders just hoping the ball would come off the wall. Did not. Well, maybe playing down in Texas helped him. Be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, down in Texas, you like to get that ball to right center yeah. where the wind blows out a little bit. Jim Johnson throwing now in the A's bullpen. So five to one, the Red Sox lead. Ross with a homer, Napoli with a homer. Johnny Gomes got a couple of hits today. The one in the first inning was a big one. It was a two out base hit with the bases loaded. And then it knocked over Ben. Swing and a miss. He went with a fastball. And it almost looked like Gomes may have been looking for a changeup. But a home run for the Red Sox. It belongs to Mike Napoli. So five to one Red Sox as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Know it all with Sports Net Central. It's brought to you by ATT Ubers, and it's coming up this evening at 6 p.m. on Comcast Sports Net Bay Area. We'll have all the highlights from this ball game here. Joe Sticklich, he's going to.
Get right in the clubhouse, get some post-game notes, and USA World Cup action. Kate Longworth and Ahmed Fareed will host. So the A's have some work to do. They trail five to one. It's the bottom of the fifth. Volt, Punto, and Gentry. Napoli scoops it up to the right field chance of we believe in vote cannot help Steven this time as he grounds out. <laughs> but you never know. When that gang out there is pulling for you. So one out here in the fifth, and that'll bring up Punto. Punto struck out in the second inning. Three strikeouts for Lester so far in the game. Josh Reddick playing three of assignment. I believe he's in New Orleans with the Sacramento River Cats. So the A's will have a significant decision to make at some point this week. Well, he's supposed to go join the club Tuesday in New go. York, and if that's the case, when the flight departs tomorrow for New York, well, somebody miss it because if, if he actually is going to join the club, you would think. Because Josh, as it turned out, flew to New York, realized that the MRI was not good, and placed on the disabled list, and had dinner, flew back to the Bay Area, started his rehab. Ryan Shulman, who stays around here for the players who are rehabbing. Just a bit outside, so a full count now to Punto. Tree to follow and then Lowry here in the fifth inning. Johnny Gomes does not buy into that. <laughs> he says, I'm going to stay right in the normal spot. I already had one hit off my head today. Right. Yeah, there it is. See, I'm telling you now, if Brock Holt is playing a normal right field, and there's a spot out there that you would consider normal, that's a base hit. Yeah. But Toto's a right hand hitter, and I think regardless of whether he hits for power or not, if you're a right fielder, why play deep in the first place? Because you're going to get more of that hitter. variety. Three, it's going to drop in front if you are playing three. deep, as opposed to ball going to be hit. But you think. When Gardner played left field and Lowry hit a ball over his head when the Yankees were in town. Yep. That was left handed hitter, left fielder. Gomes today was right handed over his. But there's not that many you can count that go over the outfielder's head. And a guy who's not a power hitter. Yeah. If he does hit a ball with power, he's going to pull it. Sure. Exactly. That place is rare because yeah. he had a change up outside, but he's the type of hitter who can use the whole field. But he's a power hitter. But if, if you're not, and I, I just think it's very smart play. And, you know, with Gentry, oh, he's doing the same thing. It also yeah, it showed Bunny missed it. So it shows your ability to go back on the ball. When, when an outfielder breaks back initially on every swing, he's pretty much saying it's hard to go back. So I'm going to break back in the event the ball's hit, and then to recover and try to track down a ball that's hit in front. That's why he plays shot. Country taps it at the plate and then rolls behind the plate. So one and two to Gentry, who has struck out and lined out. He had a shot 
right at Bogarts at third. He was in the third inning. Jim Johnson is ready. Close pitch. Tell you what, he, he has not caught one of those. And we've seen umpires who regularly call that pitch, even though it's going around the plate. Saying he went around, I believe. And Gentry can't believe that call. Well, Gentry unfortunately asked too late because Gibson had already made the call. So it goes as a strikeout, and that is strikeout number four, and we are through five innings, five to one. The A's Patriotic Fireworks Show presented by GoX.com Thursday, July 3rd after the 605 A's versus Jays game. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks. We celebrate the 4th of July with the A's. The A's Patriotic Fireworks Show is presented by GovX.com, your online box office for A's military and first responder tickets. Top of the six, that's the Red Sox five in the A's one. He's a run in the new pitcher. It's Jim Johnson. So Tommy Malone finishes with five innings time for today. So it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and small experts. 30th appearance for Jim Johnson. And he has a quick 0 2 on Herrera. Tommy Malone goes five innings, eight hits, five runs all earned. He throws 95 pitches. Well, the first little bit of a rough start for Tommy Malone in a while. Yeah. Especially at home. That's yeah. what we're unaccustomed to seeing. But boy, you look at a six plus ERA in the first inning and look at today's outing. Two runs scored in the first. So Herrera, Ross, and Bradley here in the sixth inning. That lady may have got hit with that foul ball. Hope she's okay. So Herrera is retired as Punto picks up the ground ball, and that'll bring up Ross. Now batting number three. David Ross. Ross has a homer and a strikeout. Hey, 
Hudson's home run was in the second inning. Tigers are starting to play good baseball, Ray. They just finished off a sweep of the Cleveland Indians in Cleveland. Ten to four in the final today. So Detroit back in first place, and they have now won four in a row. You know, that was a big weekend series last year when we were in Houston. They That's had right. a four-game series, and the first game was uh, won by Chris Perez, and Tigers went on to win, and the Indians looking at a chance. I think they started that series last year about a game out and then ended up three or four behind. Tigers took off, but the Indians did come back to at least win the wild card or play for the wild card. But don't expect the Tigers to stay down too long. Pitching's too good. They have their veteran offense. And Ross goes down to get a low pitch and lines it to left. One out single for David Ross. So the Indians will try to regroup. Tigers now 40 and 32 on the year. Pitch was inside, but not down as low as Jim Johnson wanted the sinker. Stayed up a little bit. So here's the ninth place hitter, Jackie Bradley Jr. The Rays beat the Astros today, five to two. The Rays still in last place in the East. Twelve out coming into today. The Red Sox are seven and a half out coming into today. Runner goes. The ball's hit hard to Punto, who flips, and they got out at second. Back to first, double play. With the runner going, the A's were still able to turn the double play. Nicely done by the middle of the A's infield. You verse rewind started the first inning. Base was loaded. Johnny Gomes seven like maybe cracked his bat on the knuckleball action with the base hit to center field. It did score two. And then Ross somebody hit two home runs before today. One of those against Tommy in Boston gets another this afternoon. And John Lester, while he is maybe not as sharp as he was with 15 strikeouts on May the third, but he's pitching well. And he has the run support. Trying hard to believe he's lost seven games. I think no that's the most surprising Yay. statistic about him wow. today. But he's given up just four hits in a run. And he's had a chance with second and third. A big hit would have tied it at three, but could not get it. And since then, the A's have seen the Red Sox add on. So Lowry, Suspidus, and Donaldson will get their hacks at Lester here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch 
was called the strike. You can believe that. And Lowry can't. Lowry had a base hit in the third inning. Sellout crowd today, which is terrific. Great way to end the homestand. Eight sellout of the season. Folks starting to come out. It's summertime here. Always with the best record in baseball coming in at 47 and 28. It's the A's with the best record in baseball. The Brewers are second. The Giants are third. The Jays are fourth. And the Tigers are fifth. So the teams with the five best records in all of baseball. Three two pitch is lifted to center. And Bradley back and under it. And that's the first down. Well, the Brewers are in Colorado, and if you score three runs on a wild pitch, you should have a pretty good record. <laughs> that was amazing. Last night. Yeah. How the heck did that happen? A cross up that resulted in three runs. There's the flag bearer. Who are the dancers? No, don't see the dancers no, today. Not today. Maybe couldn't get a seat, sold out. First pitch to Cespedes is a curveball, and it's in for a strike. Fly ball to center field for Cespedes, and then he grounded out. The Reds beat the Blue Jays today, four to three in Cincinnati. Carnacion hit his 24th home run in the loss. But a couple of interesting things happened in that game. Brett Laurie was hit by a pitch. He fractured his finger. So he's out. And Jose Batista left that game. His left leg was bothering him, and he's getting an MRI on his left leg tomorrow. So the Jays have to be concerned about it. those two things that happened today in their game. Napoli cannot quite get it. Well, that's what you hope for throughout a season when you had success, have success at injury free. You don't want the major players getting injured. And well, the Blue Jays having that great season, and they're sitting right now with the fifth best record in all of baseball, but they lost today. Such a long season. Brewers have been pretty consistent this year, though. One and two to Cespedes with Donaldson waiting in the on deck circle. And this one's popped up, and this could be playable. Bogards, he checked on his catcher to see if he was anywhere in the area. And David Ross said, You're much younger than I am. I'm just going to let you handle it. Because I get gear and a mask and everything. Uh, the ball that Norris hit a couple of minutes ago, Ross didn't see it. I don't know if he saw this one. Maybe not. And it's, it's very smart. It's up as high as that one is, and you don't have the sunglasses, or most catchers don't. And you might as well just fake it and say, I don't see it. You know? <laughs> is it July? See if it's showing the Giants after uh, next homestand, you better get your tickets because they're going fast for those two games. Toronto in town for the 4th of July weekend. Then the Giants and the A's across the bay, and then the All Star break. So it's happening fast, and we shall see soon about this young man, Josh Donaldson. When's the voting over? It's July 3rd. Thank you. 
Right field hit well, but Holt is going to get back. And he's got it. Lester is rolling along. He's now retired seven in a row. And we're on to the seventh. 5 1 Boston. Great gentry, man, as he made some terrific catches as of late. Did it in New York, went in Baltimore, and then this one on Friday night. So Greg Gentry. We're not surprised, though. We knew that he was good in the outfield, and he has shown that. But to have that kind of speed, it's pretty, pretty good to show it off, and he is able to do it, and... I would say it's hard to outrun the baseball, but if anybody can, Gentry can. At least he's been showing that. Leading off the top of the seventh inning from Boston, number 26. So Jim Rock Johnson, Cole. who got a double play to end the sixth inning, will face the top of the Red Sox order here in the seventh. First pitch to Holt is a strike at the knees. Brock Holt today is one for three. He is five for 15 in the series. And the Red Sox to it. They replace Jacoby Ellsbury at the top of their order. Maybe they found their guy. Very early yet. We talked about the age decisions coming up with Josh Reddick to come back soon, and just have to see what the Red Sox going to do. And they they made a, a bold move, and I think Brady Sizemore go so kind of showed that it's a chance to play, and if things don't happen. You put come put up the numbers, and sometimes you have to move on. Reddick after extended both knees on a play here in right field, band against the wall, and on his rehab assignment, and due to join the club on Tuesday. Driven to center, the Gentry gets back. He's near the warning track, and he makes the catch. And that's out number one. The road trip starts on Tuesday, and it'll be Scott Casimir against Bartolo Colon. And then on Wednesday, Brad Mills against Zach Wheeler, the young right hander. So, interesting matchup on Tuesday. We'll have both those games for you on Comcast Sportsnet California. Interleague Baseball, the A's and the Mets from City Field. So, Casimir started his career mm -hmm. as a New York Mets. Mm -hmm. Going back there. And Bartolo Colon. You can see Colon. Always fun to see Bartolo Colon and know that you don't have to worry about too much of a scouting report. What variation of fastball you're going to see from 
Bartolo, and of course, when he puts a bat in his hand, how is he going to come out if he does put the ball in play? Will he run hard? Probably not. And that's okay. <laughs> that's right. That's smart. Center field, Gentry will go back. He's got that one. Right on the same spot. So former A's connections there too with Bob Garrett. Bob Garrett, yes, that's right. coach, Sandy Alderson, president. Dave Hudgens, I guess, Number just 15, recently uh, even his duties as a hitting coach. The Mets are 35 and 41 on the season. Now, Sonny Gray has been pushed back. It sounds like Sonny Gray is going to pitch. Is it Saturday in Miami? Yes. So. The A's are using a couple off days. Give these guys a little extra rest. You're gonna, when it's all said and done, I'm going to pitch a lot of innings. Yeah, I think the Chavez Friday. Yeah. That's Alone right. goes Sunday with Gray in between. So it's with the off days. You get some time off and not a bad time to do it. And then pitch another 10 days or so, two weeks. Get the All Star break four days. Couldn't have done a more perfect time, maybe for the athletics, as they try to continue this success in the second half of the season, or at least post All Star break. The true second half is going to start on this next road trip. The CAs will play the 81st game. Well, and you move Sonny Gray back, and immediately you know, people get worried. Is he okay? Bob Melvin said it best. He said between now and the All Star break, he's going to make four starts. So let's. Pick those four starts where we can maybe rest him a little bit. Yep. And that's what the A's are doing. Another fly ball, this one to right, and Jim Johnson with three fly ball outs. So seventh inning stretch time from the Coliseum. It's the Red Sox five and the A's one. Five to one, the A's are trailing with Norris, Moss, Casco due up against Lester. Lester at 86 pitches through six innings. The two starts this year against the Athletics, one run in 14 innings. And that one run was today, and that was an unearned run, is that correct? That's right. And uh, it's 14 innings, he's received run support of. Five today and six or 11 runs. And he knows how to pitch with a lead. He's proven that again today. First pitch on the inside corner is a strike. The Mariners won again today. They beat the Royals two to one. So the Mariners sweep the Royals. They've lost four in a row now, the Royals, after. 
a great what 10 game winning streak. Huh. And now they're trying to stop a losing streak. Isn't that interesting. So in the last four days, the Tigers have won four in a row. <laughs> the Royals have lost four in a row. Well, that's that's four games in the standings right. just like Absolutely. that. Yeah. Now with the Tigers winning today. Tigers now have a two and a half game lead in the AL Central. So the Royals were in first place for a couple days. Had a game and a half lead and they've lost four and the Tigers have finished your two and a half. Yep. Cook throwing for the A's. High fly ball foul down the right field line headed toward the bullpen. You know, Johnny Gomes had a pretty good day today, and we saw what he did in 2012 with the A's. And he does not believe the season's over for the Red Sox. And I think he said it best. He said nobody expected them to win the World Series last year. They said go back to 2012. And he said the A's were in first place for four innings. <laughs> Basically, right. the final day of the season, they got in first place and ended up going to postseason. But you just never know. And you play it out until the old. Mathematically eliminated part shows up on the standings. If that happens, you keep playing. The three and two to Norris. Back to back. Five for three in a row. Trying to get past the game five of the division series. Very close pitch. Norris with the walk, and the A's have their leadoff man aboard, and that's the first time today they've had that. Well, let's see if the A's can do something with it. Now batting first try to go back door with the fastball, could not get the call. Brandon, Seven, three, and two counts today for Lester against the Athletics, and. Planks are make it. Uh, Moss had a base hit on the three and two. Now this walk. Otherwise, the three and two have not resulted in any base runners for the A's. Moss had a line drive to right field in the fourth inning for a base hit. First pitch is low. Today, where the Padres fired their general manager. Really? Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Josh Burns. Huh? Huh. Padres. Uh, 11 games under 500. Right at the center fielder, Bradley. He's got it. I don't see general managers fired in the middle of the season very often. The managers, of course. Yeah, choose a general manager firing a manager last <laughs> week. <laughs> season. Bud Black. Considered one of the better managers in baseball. Alberto Padres are, are really struggling to score runs. He's reading about how a chance to the lowest on base percentage in the last 70 years. League, we go back to the National League West next year. Is that correct? Well, so. that's supposed to be the rotation. We'll see. That would be nice to have West Coast instead of making all the trips actually Atlanta and the Mets. So it's too logical, I guess, to have those in the same trip. Same trip. Oh, can't do that. Well, the Mets, the Marlins, the Braves, that sounds like a decent trip. Why put Detroit in? Why don't just go to all three? It's a good call. A very good call. I mean, considering Atlanta and I mean, pretty close to each other in the southwest, southeast. You'd rather go to Atlanta, you'd rather go to Atlanta in August anyway. After Kansas City, <laughs> you know, you get primed to Kansas City for Atlanta. Call that the humidity road trip. That's right. And that's just fouled on the third base line. Travel attire has been pretty casual. Maybe at that trip they'll say coats and ties required. <laughs> Wear shorts. Wear heat and humidity. Oh my goodness. Back 
Maspo with an RBI double in the game. And that one to the shortstop, and this could be two, and it is. 6 4 3, double play, and Lester gets out of the seventh, and now we're headed to the eighth. Still 5 1, the Red Sox. Lovers, we are can unite at the O.Co. Coliseum where fans can bring their dogs to the A's 7.05 p.m. game against the Orioles. Special ticket is required for Bark at the Park presented by Donna Bone, Adams, and Abelder. This event sells out annually and limited tickets remain. For information on the tickets, visit athletics.com slash bark at the park today. That's accurately said that, uh, of course, we'll be back for that weekend for yeah. the 25th anniversary of the reunion of... Nine World Series. So he'll be here for the Bark at the Park Friday night. Is he excited about that? Yeah. Of course. Of course he is. <laughs> so when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. It's your oil change tune up and smog experts. Ryan Cook comes in. So Cook will face. Ortiz, Napoli, and Gomes. Read some interesting stuff about Ryan Cook recently. Looked better lately. Mm -hmm. Found something. Found a flaw. And he said, I fixed it. Looking at some video with Kurt Young. They found something. That's what video will do. Well, didn't say specifically what it was. He okay. never will. Okay. They won't disclose it. But as long as they found it, they fixed it. But he has looked better the last couple hours. See, that's what all the footage at Adam Road puts together. Piles all that in. Because if something happens, you can always look at it. And, and you separate pitchers, hitters, and a lot of information available. Ortiz hits it hard but right at the ship. Punto on the grass, scoops it up. And that's out number one. You know, I want him to come up with a statistic that shows wind shift is important. Ball hit to an area that under normal number circumstances 12, would not Mike be caught Napoli. with the shift. And I bet David Ortiz might hit 400 <laughs> with some well, of the balls yeah, that are hit. Yeah. At Moss, I mean, how many times he hit right into where if he's not there, it's in the hole in the right field for base hip instead. It's out there somewhere. Yeah, I I'm, I'm sure yeah, it will be. Yeah. 
starts getting in your head, you're in trouble. Yeah. I'm sure. It's, it's hard to change anything you're doing. And I guess for the Red Sox, they could just think back to a splendid splinter, probably one of the first that they did it for him. Yep, for the shift with Ted Williams. Of course, he had hit over. I mean, you, you put a red seat. Yeah, he was. Park. Yeah, I think he'd go over any time he wanted. Probably wasn't too concerned about it. Mike Napoli's had a good day. A walk, a single, and a homer. He has scored twice. His home run was in the fifth inning, and it was to right center. So two and two now to Napoli. Red Sox with two in the first, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fifth. And a fast ball, and Napoli swings and misses. So a couple of good sliders, and then Cook went back to the fastball. Well, two games on this homestand that Johnson's come in. And Cook has followed him, both pitching outstanding baseball. Today, Johnson, two innings. One inning earlier with Mills start, who lasted just four innings. And Johnson for an inning, Cook for two. And so the two doing a very good job in the middle part of this game. So Cook now faces Gomes. Gomes, two run single. And then another single that was in the third and then a strikeout in the fifth. So he's two for three. Overall in the series he's two for nine. is one year with the Athletics. He hit 262 with 18 home runs and 47 RBIs in 99 games. Probably both agree that the biggest home run he hit all season was the Francisco Liriano Grand Slam. Right. Friday night starting the second half of the season. Kobe A's a big weekend at Target Field. Took it right down to the final game of the season. It already clinched postseason with a wild card one on a Monday, but went out three against the Rangers. And as it turns out this year, the A's will finish the season in Arlington, Texas against the Rangers. Final four. And Gomes has a three hit day. So right back up the middle. Ten hits for the Red Sox total. Very quick bat. Got a pretty good fastball one and Napoli swung through and missed Number completely. 10, Jonathan Herrera. Johnny Gomes with a two strike pitch. Very quick with the bat. So here's Jonathan Herrera. Herrera's 0 for 3. He did reach on a fielder's choice in the third. Yeah, Lester's not going anywhere. He's been very good through seven innings. And that one's hit down the right field line, and that's fair. Johnny Gomes digging toward third, and they're going to wave him home. Gomes coming and he's going to make it. The throw to third is late. And Jonathan Herrera with an RBI triple here in the eighth inning to make it 6 1 Red Sox. Well, that's about the only place you're going to be able to score a runner from first. And they did it. Down in the corner, of course, with two eyes. Gomes breaking on top. Stephen Bolt did as well as he could to get to the card ball in the corner. Johnny Gomes didn't even have to look. Just pick up the third base coach. Ryan Butterfield and had him running all the way, not looking for two two out hits. And instead, makes it easily. 
third with a triple, and that time it was the overthrow of Punto, the number one cutoff man. It was Moss, the number two cutoff there man. Go. And picked it up through the third. So Totus. David Ross has two hits in this game. Homer and a single. He's also struck out. Slider drops low. Jeff Francis is up. Cook got the first two hitters in this inning. Fastball there. for the Red Sox. So bottom of the eighth coming up. It's now 6-1 Boston. Game summary is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer 6 11 and 1 for the Red Sox 1 4 0 for the Athletics Lester's been good. Tommy Malone struggled some today five runs in five innings. So lots and lots of work to do for the A's and they're going to have to do it against a guy who's pitching great. John Lester. And just when you think there's a. A time you're going to get to Lester, he gets a double playground yep, ball. That's exactly right. Mark Badenhop is up for the Red Sox. First pitch to vote right there for a strike. Vote is 0 for 2, reached on a fielder's choice in the second. A quick go to Steve. Steve and Vogue gets a hit because they're cheering for him again. They're voting for vote. They're voting for vote. That's right. So Lester over a hundred pitches now. Punto to follow and then the top of the order Gentry. Oh, a little pop up behind third. Bogards gets back there and he makes the catch and then tumbles to the ground. See some of these plays Bogards made it on Donaldson's foul ball. This one acrobatic play. 
thinking this may be the day it's the Red Sox. They have a pretty good pitcher on the mound and making the plays behind them. That's a fair ball. Now that he just stumbled, Number caught one. the ball, and yeah. fell into foul territory, but it was called fair by Quinn Walcott if the ball had been dropped, which it wasn't. He was a youngster, huh? He was 21 years old, yeah. Xander Bogart. <laughs> So here's Punto, who's 0 for 2, a strikeout and a fly ball in the right field. Hayes have not had a hit since the fourth inning. That's when Moss had a two out single. In the hole, Herrera throws, and they got him. What a play by Jonathan Herrera. Well, that's a strong throw, airborne. He jumped and then threw. It was a throw and jump. It was in the hole. Nick Ponto, as he a lot of times does, slides hit first. And that is a tremendous throw, accurate. A couple of steps, jump while he was taking the couple of steps at the four seam grip. And that was an out. And a great play. Watch him. <laughs> That's pretty strong. Oh, that is. Show off. Yeah. Yeah. Utility guy <laughs> showing off. Yeah. Yeah. She made Nick Punto on that, which. But, you know, the couple of steps he took, you see him rotate the ball in his hand. And because you don't want to throw a sinker, you throw a four seam. So the pitch is the only ones that you want to rip a baseball to throw a sinker. Herrera? Yeah. We're impressed, yeah. He swung the bat well. Pretty good day offensively. Oh. Gentry got hit. Gentry to first base. Oh, that's that's not good. Or leg or something in that area. Some place they call a splash. <laughs> because that sound was. There's a ball loose out in right field. Yeah, that's good. Just what Gentry needs a little extra time to feel the pain. So Gentry takes his lead. Trying to stretch it out over there a little bit. And first pitch to Lowry is low. Lowry is grounded out, single, and hit a fly ball to center field. Throw to second base is late. So that's what you do if you get in. Swipe the bag. Especially you have a success rate that's off the charts. And Gentry, Lester paying no attention to him, and rightfully so with the, the lead that he has. And so why not take it? He does. He gets in a score position. He is yet to be caught this year. Right, Gentry. To a pitch missed inside three and up. Well, the sellout crowd has not had a whole lot to cheer for today. And that's low, it's a four pitch walk. Issued by Lester. He's got four strikeouts. And he's made the, and he's made the move. 
So when it's time for change, the Expedi oil change in tune-up, your oil change tune-up and small experts. Spade map coming in. authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group LLC. Two on two out for the A's. A little two out rally. Trailing the Red Sox six to one. So Burke Badenhop comes in. Badenhop Pitched a couple of scoreless innings on Friday night in game two of the series. Is that given about 18 consecutive scoreless, something like that? I Adding think so. 16 of the two. And so, hey, Cespedes home run to get into the streak and get the A's back in the game. But do something that gets some sellout crowd fans excited. Cespedes 0 for 3. Had a quiet afternoon. He's hit into a double play. He is fouled out and he is in a fly ball to center field. Well, Lester out after seven and two thirds innings and 111 pitches. Runner goes, Gentry, so he'll still third. So the pitch to the two and one count and give him a stolen base. So Gentry has a couple steals. Well, again, if they're going to give it to him, Sesame is ducking down to help Ross. Fortunately, no chance, no throw. As a hitter standing in the box, stands straight up. Sesame did not want to go and hit him. That's that one up the middle into center field of base here. Gentry will score, and it's six to two. Well, Cespedes gets RBI number fifty. Again, the top spin when Cespedes hits a ground ball. The top spin is unbelievable. The way the ball shoots through the infield. This is once it got over Baden Hop's head, and he missed it. He did a couple of hops and straight into center field without a problem. Going over, making a dive, and thought maybe he had a chance, but it definitely picked up some speed. So here's Donaldson. Not close to Donaldson outside. Cespedes to Rush. Just again, 2 0. That's Miller, the big lefty out in the bullpen. 
Is it me or has it been a tight strike zone all day? A little bit. I mean, there's some pitches that, and Maidenhoff been in the bullpen. Of course, it's coming in the safe inning. He's got to be wondering where are those pitches. And of course, Greg Gibson's not called them all day either side. First the game, three and all. Coming and talk to Batenhoff. He looks like he's a little angry. Yeah, he, with he's, his he's, right yeah he's a little. Well, I won't say a little angry. I think very angry. And that pitch is close, but the previous pitch probably closer than that. You see, that's the problem when you're in the bullpen. You don't see all the things that happen. In this case, the first seven innings. And Lester has not reacted. Throws his number like that, he may see his consecutive scoring streak end. He's just frustrated to the point of throwing right down the middle. Three-one pitch is there for a strike. <laughs> now the fans go. <laughs> Well, look at the height of this one. That's high. That is high. That's yeah, that's high. So yeah, that's just it's a floating strike zone. So three and two. With two outs, the runners will go and they do take off and it's hit in the left field, and that's a base hit. Lowry will score, and now it's six to three. Thing there that Josh Donaldson started the first base on the three and one, then gets a pretty good sinker down and in and hammers it past the third base for Bogart. And Number 36. another Big run and a big swing of the bat. Herrera. And that's the time they're going to die for a ball because at least might keep the ball in the infield, but maybe it was hit so hard. Top spin again. Well, the master of the three run home run is yeah. up. And Derek Norris. Norris today has reached on an air. He has fouled out and he has walked. And the first pitch is hit into the center field. A base hit. Sesperus is going to score. And now it's six to four, and now the semi crowd is into a big time. And I know it doesn't mean that much, but this consecutive string just ended for Batenhop. That was his one to score. John Farrell out again because Batenhop is giving up three singles. Derek Norris jumping on a high fastball. He didn't wait around, and the way the infield was spread, so Brandon Moss is going to come up and he's going to face Andrew Miller. But the, all this happening with two outs and a hit batter with two strikes in this inning. Hit batter, walk, base hit, base hit, base hit, two run game. So it's a 6 4 game, unbelievable.
Coco Crisp yesterday. Tenth inning, and that's a game winner with Nathan Caspo. Coco also had the big hit on Friday night. And we'll give you one guess who's coming up to pinch hit right now. It's Coco Crisp. Where is Coco known, babe? Got to get him in there sometime. So Crisp is hitting for Moss. So it's now a 6 4 game. First turn run in 32.1 innings for Aiden Hop. He faced Cespedes, Donaldson, Norris, three right handed hitters, and they all got hits. First pitch to Coco is a strike from Andrew Miller. So Miller making his 36th appearance. Coco lines it into the glove of Herrera, and the inning comes to an end. But the A's got the place going. They scored three times, and we got a ball game. Ninth inning coming up. Red Sox six, A's four. Sportsnet California is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the A's scored three in the bottom of the eighth inning, and now it's a ball game. 6-4, ninth inning. Number 45. Well, he is back to the bullpen. It's time for change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Dan Otero comes in. Appearance number 35 for Otero. So he'll face Bradley, Holt, and Bogarts here in the ninth. You start looking at the extra runs the Red Sox have got, especially last inning. See the defensive changes for the athletics with Gentry to right, Coco to center, Stephen Volt goes to first. First career game at first, of course. You just won't hear the, the fans cheer. You believe in Stephen Volt? No, have to start doing it over here on the first base line. Here's your Red Sox closure. Closer Koji Uhara is what I'm trying to say. Koji Uhara. <laughs> <laughs> Strike two and one to Jackie Bradley, who has singled, popped out, and hit into a double play.
and Stuart Punto who charges. And that's the first time. So now to the top of the order and Brock Holt. Number 26, Brock Holt. Holt is one for four on the afternoon. Single way back in the first inning. First pitch is sinker in there first try. Mentioned earlier, the Rangers and the Angels will play tonight. Darvish and Shoemaker in the pitching matchup there. Darvish seven and three, Shoemaker four and one. Yeah. No, dude, you Darvish don't have a good game because it's not the athletic. Yep, I agree. Eight innings, one run. <laughs> That's what he does against him. He's seven and three, zero oh and two against the A's. So. Without the A's in there, actually three games, he could have been 0 and 3 instead of 0 and 2 against the A's. One got off the hook, but I'm sure Ron Washington, Mike Max knows he pitches well enough and can eventually turn the tables against the A's. But it's a question of whether he believes. Nice play by Otero. He grabs it. And that's the second out. Well, you get one more out, and this place is going to get you rough coming to the bottom of the ninth inning because I'm sure these fans feel that there is magic in the air here at the Coliseum. So, Uihara, who oh, threw one pitch yesterday, gave up the hit to Coco Chris, would be coming on, trying to save at least a two run lead for the Red Sox and salvage a victory. Bogarts is 0 for 4 in the ball game. Like he does not have a hit in this series. He's 0 for 12. Inside corner strike. In that ninth inning, it'll be Kiaspo, Vote, Punto, the bottom three in the A's lineup. Horses Bogart to scoot out of the way. From Cespedes. First hit in the series for Xander Bogarts. So the flight to Seattle will be a little bit better for Bogarts. A little bit towards the end of the bat, didn't hit it hard enough to get past the Cespedes, to only get to Cespedes so he can make the play. What it does is it gets Pedroia in that bat. Yes, it does. Pedroia one for four. He singled back in the first inning and scored. Big bad Abad getting loose for David Ortiz if it gets to that point in this inning. I know Abad heating up quickly down in the A's bullpen. Hero would just as soon yep. <laughs> get this taken care of right now right. as he's ahead 0 and 2 to Pedroia. Pedroia lays off. The 
Red Sox are thinking we could pick up a game on not only the first place Blue Jays, but the second place Yankees as well. Yankees lost. See if Steven Vaughn handle that first game at first base. <laughs> not even concerned about him over there. Jason's going to come in to pinch it sometime. So once another three catchers will be in the lineup throughout the day, somehow, some way. Petroya went around, tried to hold up, couldn't do it. So here we go, folks. Bottom of the ninth inning. A's going for the sweep. They trail six to four with Yohara coming in. John Lester, seven and two thirds innings. Great job. He did not have the 15 strikeouts that he had against the A's on May the 3rd, but he got a couple of big double plays when the A's did finally try to do something. Also got a, an out with a couple of runners on. The A's one hit away from tying the game, but Lester looking for win number nine. He's three outs away. The A's have pulled it within two and now face the closer of the Red Sox, Koji Uehara. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Oh, there is Koji Uhara. 38 years old. And he had a very fine season last year, and he's having a very fine season this year. 15 for 15 in saves. Last year he was four and one with a 1.09 ERA and he had 21 saves. Got the final out of the World Series. That's a big deal. First pitch to Kiaspo is high. So Kiaspo leading things off. Vote to follow and then Punto. As Ray said, Jaso still on the bench. Shogard still on the bench. Thirty-one straight saves in the regular season for Obi Uhara. This one tapped slowly. Napoli grabs it and he steps on the bag for up and down. Well, Uhara got in the game yesterday, but he yeah. one pitch, one pitch. So he should be okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. The one pitch was a game one in order to go to talk about should he have walked Coco Chris with first base open, but John Farrell brought in his closer to try to stop the threat for the athletics. And I guess the last thing you expect him to do for the closer to come in and touch the walk somebody. But after Coco, he got a base hit. Game over. We just need a base runner to get the tying run to the plate. First pitch. Call the strike to Cole. Way out the front. 
that's that you are a splitter changeup and whatever it is, but it's kind of a funky pitch. Yeah, it's a split and it acts like a changeup but disappears as it approaches the plate, as that one did. So one and two to vote. And he's 0 for 3 today. Hit down the right field line. Doesn't have enough. And that baby's gone six to five. Well, the pitch he swung in this bat is the same pitch he just hit a home run. Definitely believe in Stephen Vogt now in right field. No matter where he plays, floats in and goes out. That ball did not break as sharply down as the one that he missed. And Stephen Vogt hit it shortest distance just beyond the 330 mark, just above the Walter Haas jersey in right field. So the A's pull within one. Put Joe fouls it back. Second home run of the year for Vogt. Watch where it lands. That's a sign, a red sign, and hey, right there. Foot Joe pops it up. Herrera, the shortstop, is under it. He's got it, and that's the second out. And here's Jason. So indeed, Jaso to hit for Gentry. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Batting for Gentry, number five, John Jaso. Well, here's Jaso. Jaso, four for nine with a home run as a pinch hitter. There's a sign on the field in right center. Must have fell from the seats. Well, Jackie Bradley's going to pick it up. What he's going to do with it, that I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Maybe draw on it? <laughs> Maybe. Jay So got Jensen and Ferrari of the Angels last year and this year. Pinch hit home runs. That is hard to do. He's done it twice. First pitch, right field. <laughs> that baby is good. <laughs> oh my. Saves. It's blown. Two home runs. That was a fastball to Jaso. You talk about remarkable. Jaso got Freire first pitch. He gets Uehara first pitch. Unbelievable. And that quickly, three last inning, two this inning is a tie game. Lowry, a little tapper up the first base side. Flip to first, side retired. So the A's have done it again. They score three in the eighth, two in the ninth. Jaso with a two out pinch hit home run to tie it. So we are headed to extra innings, tied at six.
dramatic yeah. fashion. Fastball down and in, missed location. See Ross go inside. Akoji Uehara watching as John Jaso does it again. And top water said tag them all. Jaso flat footed, no stride, and knew he had it. Man, is stronger and stronger this year. But that is strong when you go no stride, go to the top foot or front foot, and hit it out. What a great swing. He might have been protecting against a splitter instead of gets a fastball and reacts and crushes it. Oh, oh, I can't believe it. So, Cap, I'm going to let you figure out the defensive alignment because it has changed dramatically in this inning. New pitcher for sure in Abad. Face or tease. So we'll, we'll get to these changes. <laughs> <laughs> we do know David Ortiz is facing Fernando Abad. How about that? Yeah. Abad, who has actually won two games this year, and it's uh, considering he had about 0 and 15 since he won his game when he first started. But pitched very well, and he's got this batter and some more because nobody else is warming up. Three in the eighth, two in the ninth to tie it. And John Lester, who really was rolling along, he hit him again. Gentry with two strikes, with two outs in the eighth inning. And that started. Gentry steals two bags, walks Lowry on four pitches, Aiden Hop three consecutive hits. Stephen Fulton back and right. And Gaspar is the first. Ortiz reaches for it, pokes it foul. Puntos at third. So Puntos at third. The vote is now back and right. Punto is now at third. Noir is still behind the plate. Sesame gets to the left. Crispin seven. Eric Sogard comes in the game. So Sogard playing second base and Caspo still in the game and he's at first. So the infield is Punto at third, Lowry at short, Sogard at second, Caspo at first. Ortiz drills one left center field. That's it. Well, gone. David Ortiz homers to left center field. And it's 7 6 Boston. I'm afraid of that because that's a pretty good swing. And 0 for today except for this one. And a hard, actually not so hard of a slider. Maybe it should have been thrown harder, but kind of hung in the middle of the play. And that's a Fenway Green monster shot there. I mean, this one carries out. Reggie Harris says, thank you very much. So for Ortiz, career home run number 448. So he is one away from tying Mad Vlad and Jeff Bagwell. And that was a big one. Napoli taps it to Puntos at third, flips it across, and that's out in the run. So Johnny Gomes will hit. And it looks like Uihara is going to go back out for this next inning. Now batting. And time Johnny for the Gomes. closer. We'll pitch one inning. And that's it. But uh, we'll probably told John Farrell if this is tied or now in the lead again, probably wanted to go back out. Johnny Gomes has had a big day. He's three for four. And he lines went down the left field line, but it's going to hook foul. We may be checking with you, Har, a little bit, and make sure everything's okay. Let's 
Sox had have now. Over the athletics three to two. Yeah, three. Norris. And Norris reaches up and grabs it. Put <laughs> the mask in his right yeah, hand. Yeah, he had it all the way. <laughs> That's the always amazing. For the athletics. <laughs> Eric Sogard. Well, it's funny too because you, you can't use your mask to do no. anything with the baseball. No. And, you know, what if the ball pops out and you know you're use reaching your for it? Yeah. You don't want to use your mask. I thought if there was one that going to be missed or popped out, that was going to be it because that was high. <laughs> and Cayaspo is the third baseman playing first. He said, I don't want anything to do with it. Punto is too far away from it. The two outs. Here's Herrera, who had a big hit in the eighth inning. He two out RBI triple. And at that point, it made it a six to one game. And you were just thinking, well, the Red Sox just adding on here a little bit, but now you look back and it turns out to be a yeah. huge hit. Well, that one, of course, you go back to the pickoff at first base, the throw to the plate, Napoli score. That was a gift run with a couple of outs. So a couple of two outs runs by the Red Sox. And that was not good, folks. And got him again. It got him good. Greg Gibson immediately waved toward the A's dugout, and this is not good, folks. Looked like it was the big backswing again. Mm -hmm. This time, Jonathan Herrera. Yeah, Bob Mel was always. Vote had started to walk in. He just told him. Fastball inside. And when they release the top hand, the complete extension. Which is he releases the top hand and then completely follows through. Steven Vogt's going to come in and catch as Norris very, very slowly walks into the A's clubhouse with Walt Horn. I think Donaldson's going to have to go in. Or Donaldson is the DH, so at yeah, some point he's, he's got to come go into in play there. here. Yeah, he's got to play because everybody else yeah. is spoken for. Yeah. Looks like. Nick Punto is jogging out to the outfield. So Donaldson will play third. Punto will play right. And 
Vote will catch. So Stephen Vote is going to get his third glove out that he's used today. I think Puntel had to change also from second to third now to right field, finding a bigger glove. Donaldson to DH to so put a bot in spot for Derek Norris. And well, we hope he's okay because that you know you, you wear the mask, you wear the helmet, the helmet to protect, and we've seen him get hit on top of the head. But this one, you can see it to the side on the left side, in the temple air ear area, and that's scary. So the count is one and two to Jonathan Herrera. So again, Punto to right, Donaldson to third, and Vote back behind the plate. The one two pitches. Back to Abad, who throws, and they just got Herrera at first. Side retired. So our thoughts are with Derek Norris. Let's hope he's okay. David Ortiz with a home run, so the Red Sox grab the lead back 7-6. Down 6 1. They scored three in the eighth, two in the ninth to tie it. And then the Red Sox got a David Ortiz home run in the top of the tenth to grab the lead back. So now it's 7 to 6. Koji Uhara is back out there. So here's the situation the, the pitcher spot, which is now part of this A's lineup, is the third spot. And that's going to occur the third spot in this inning, I should say. So it's Cespedes Donaldson, and then the A's are going to have to use a pinch hitter, and it's going to have to be a pitcher because all their position players are have been used. So that's the situation with the A's batting order. So well, pitchers have been taking batting practice, so maybe this is an opportune time for them to see what they can do because somebody will have to hit. First pitch to Cespedes is a fastball first strike. Koji Uhara in that ninth inning when he gave up two home runs, one to vote, one to Jason. Through 12 pitches, so that certainly helps. Only throwing 12, that John Farrell could send him back out there. Cespedes skies one right side of the diamond, and it's Petroya hanging with it, and he's got it. Uhara coming in, he threw a split, a bad split finger fastball to vote that he homered, making a one run game. Todd Jason pinch hitting already was a couple of pitching home runs, gets a fastball first pitch. He hit that for a game time home run. Fortunately for the A's, David Ortiz, who have been 0 for 4 today, an opposite field home run. 
Something that he's done pretty consistently throughout his career in Boston. Whether it be regular season or postseason. And Donaldson takes a strike. Nobody in the on deck circle for the A's. Except the bat boy, and he's acting like a hitter, which is really not a bad idea. So Doolittle looks like he's going to be the guy. Quick throw to Donaldson. Where's Doolittle, a position player all through the minor leagues. So he probably is your best choice. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, well, I'm sure Bob Melvin is saying, you're the closer, you're a pitcher now, so this is an emergency. So, yeah. One and two the count to Donaldson. Donaldson is the DH today, but he is in the game now at third base, so these are without their DH. One for four. He had that RBI single in the eighth inning when the A's had the two out rally. And he slams at a pitch in the dirt. And that's the second out here in the bottom of the tenth. So here comes Doolittle. Well, the splitter in the dirt, and number 62. Not much Donaldson could do, especially with the location of the splitter. Doolittle. So here's Doolittle, left handed hitter. No surprise, it's his first major league at bat. How about just a home run and really <laughs> turn this place around? Slightly open stance for Sean Doolittle. Had to look at the first one and really hard probably knew it and throw him a fastball. This is as about a straight away infield and outfield as you will ever see in baseball today. And a quick 0 2. And that was a split, and he's probably going to get another one. And he knows it. First pitch was the best pitch, fastball, but. <laughs> 2009, the last season that Doolittle had as a player. 2010, he was hurt right. most of the year. Takes a close pitch. Good eye. And the split, and be surprised if you O'Hara throws anything but a split finger fastball the rest of the way. One two pitch, bounce to second. Pedroia scoops it up. And that's the ball game, and that's a crazy afternoon of baseball, folks. Lots of highs, lots of lows, but when it's all said and done, the Red Sox on a David Ortiz home run in the 10th inning salvaged the final game of this series. Red Sox win it 7 to 6 in 10 innings. So the A's finish this 10 game homestand with a 7 and 3 record. So it's time to head out on the road for the A's. That'll happen tomorrow. Once again, final score the Red Sox 7, the A's 6 in 10 innings. You've been watching A's baseball. On Comcast Sports Set California, don't go away. Ace Post Game Live with Chris Townsend and Bip Roberts starts right now.